I am Naya Carter-Gray, and in this session, we're going to be covering the best practices and some hot new tips and tricks in QuickBooks Online. All right, let's dig into this content. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I am the owner and founder of First Step Accounting, where we make accounting a little less taxing for small business owners all across the U.S. Um, I am an enrolled agent. I love being an EA. I'm licensed directly by the U.S. Treasury, can handle tax matters in all 50 states. I am also QuickBooks Online Advanced Certified Pro Advisor, was named by HubDoc two years in a row as one of the top 50 cloud accountants uh, in North America, was listed by Forbes as one of the top 100 tax Twitter accounts to follow two years in a row, as well as one of the top 50 women in accounting by practice ignition two years in a row. And I'm also the founder of the Taking Your Firm Virtual summit. So some of you may know me from all of these things. <laughs> now, what are we going to talk about today? Today, QuickBooks Online is my favorite um, bookkeeping software. It's the only one I use in my practice. And so we're going to talk about some of the awesome features in there that allow for better banking. So we're going to dig into the app transactions and receipts and rules. Then we're going to talk about how to manage the money. We want you to get paid. We want your clients to get paid. Then we want to make sure that you can easily pay bills and then plan that cash flow. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to cover some month and close uh, things, things like the month in review, the reconciliation process, and talk about how you can provide some beautiful reports to your clients and customers. So better banking. It's always important to spend some time talking about the bank feed since this is really where we spend most of our time. Like we are going to spend a bunch of time in the bank feed all the time. This is really where we do everything from entering in transactions and checks and matching them. We know that this is really the heart and soul of QuickBooks Online. But there are some beautiful new features here that I'm not sure you know about. So I want to dig in and talk about them just a little bit. <laughs> so did you know that there is an Amazon business purchases app that can be synced directly into QBO? Woof! If you didn't know, I'm going to tell you right now, this one app has really changed the dynamic of ask client transactions for me because Amazon is really one of the places where my client base shops a bunch and, you know, they get tired of me asking them specifically, what the heck did you buy? Well, this app will pull in all of that data for you to make it easy for you to be able to categorize and classify those transactions. It will help you reduce manual data entry. You'll have that detail right there on the screen, and then it makes it easy to reconcile the books. So all QBO admin users can add this app. You just would access it via the banking tab. So it would be just as if you were entering in a new bank account, except this time you're going to be logging in to Amazon Business. This does not work with Amazon Prime uh, for individuals, and it does not work with the Amazon seller accounts. This is only Amazon Business or Amazon Business Prime. So um, upon connecting this app, what it will ask you is what date you want to start importing transactions into QBO. So that's the other thing. Don't think it's going to pull in five years worth of data because you can say, hey, I wanted to pull it in as of, uh, let's just say, June 1st, right? You have that option. Once you have connected it, you will notice that it now lives in a tab called App Transactions right in that banking center. So it's right next to the place where we spend a bunch of time. Anyway, um, it is, looks just like the banking tab. There is a review tab and an and a, a enter tab. So it is easy, breezy, lemon peasy. I, like, I absolutely love it. What will happen is once those transactions are pulled in, you'll see the order details. So you'll see every little thing that was ordered. You'll be able to categorize it right there on the screen. You'll be able to select a payee. And then there is even a link directly to the order. So if you by chance happen to need to go back and you know look at something that the client purchased, you can do so just by clicking the link. So it, puts it all at your fingertips, which just makes our lives that much easier. 
So did you know that you can manage receipts and bills directly inside of QBO? So I know a lot of us are using some of those wonderful receipt capture uh, management tools, but this may be a way to eliminate one of your monthly recurring subscription costs because you can add those transactions directly into QBO. They will live in a receipts tab right in that banking center. So it's one of my favorite new features. And so I like to highlight it because I hope it's one of yours too. Um, there are a couple of different ways to get that receipt or bill into QBO. You can upload it directly from a computer. You can connect it directly to Google Drive or and or you can set up an email address for those receipts to be emailed directly into QBO. And we're going to talk about a couple of those options here. Um, but the way to really get these receipts in is just literally taking a picture of the bill of receipt. Um, and it must be a photo that is either a JPEG, a PDF, a GIF, or a PNG file. Um, those are the only file types that are accepted. Then good practice, make sure the file only contains one receipt. Um, it doesn't handle multiple, multiple receipts very well, so it only pick up the first one. <laughs> And then before you get started, make sure you're setting up that custom email address. And I'm going to show you how to do that too. And QuickBooks uses OCR technology. So it's going to pull out some beautiful information to make getting that detail inside of QBO that much faster. Now, I personally prefer using the mobile app because then my clients don't have to worry about providing that receipt later. Literally, they use the mobile app, snap a picture, and that receipt is now inside of the receipts tab in QBO. It is literally that simple, that easy. Um, plus, in my opinion, the receipt gets there much faster by using the mobile app. I don't know why. Don't ask me. I'm not one of the programmers, but it does get there faster from what I have tested um, if we use the mobile app first. Bada boom, bada boom. And if your clients have multiple receipts, they can, you know, enter them in right at the same time just by clicking add, clicking add receipt. <laughs> now, each company can set up a unique email address for email forwarding of your receipts and bills. The first time you go to access this, it will prompt you to set up an email address. Um, so don't pick anything crazy. And by this point, I try to minimize the number of characters that my clients have to remember uh, <laughs> when we set up this email address. So don't make it extremely long either. Don't make it complex. Make it simple, something easy that they can remember. Um, and then I also encourage my clients to save this email address in their phones or in their um, Gmail as a contact. So then they don't have to remember what the email address is as well. Now, the way you access this is just to go back to that banking tab, transaction, go to the receipts tab, and then customize the email. So I'm going to show you that when we dig into QBO. Um, a couple of things you want to note here, the only people that will be able to forward receipts into QBO are active users on the account. So if uh, someone is not set up as a user, then they will not be able to just forward an email address to QBO and to that particular client's account. So in the email address that that receipt comes from must be the email address that's tied to their Intuit account. So just keep that in mind. That's really, really going to be important. Now, the other option to get receipts here is you can always drag and drop the file directly from your computer. So all you would do is click that upload button um, and either select the file or literally just open the file window and drop it into that upload box. It's really that easy. Um, once it's there, you will see that it lives in that processing tab. Uh, and so, like I said, the mobile app seems to be a little faster, but just leave it for, you know, a few minutes, come back to it later. What I like to do is upload receipts all at one time and then go to another client, then come back. By the time I come back, they are done processing. Uh-oh. Okay. Wait a minute.
Once the receipt is in, you will see a green check mark that means that the receipt has been processed. Um, and when it's done, it will show up under for review where you can then add it as a receipt or a bill. QuickBooks will automatically pull some information from that receipt. It'll pull the date, it'll pull the amount, it'll pull the vendor, and it'll pull the last four digits of the credit card from the image. So it helps you reduce the manual data entry because it's smart. It, it's like, hey, we recognize this. You just need to confirm whether it's correct or not. Um, then it will do the same exact thing for your bills. Uh, it will also let you know, hey, we think this bill is already in there. So I'll show you how that works as well. Because if it's uh, an entry that's already in there, it won't, it will kind of point out, hey, we don't want you to enter any duplicates. <laughs> and then once the receipts have been entered, they now live under the reviewed tab. So once you've reviewed them and you've entered them in, you can just go there and see all of the receipts you've entered. If there's a problem, you just hit the little arrow, or I'm just sorry, you just hit undo. You can undo it just like you can any banking transaction. So don't feel like if you enter in the receipt and you, you feel like I did something wrong, you can undo it. You can see it right under that for review, that reviewed tab. One other good thing is that this technology is super smart. It will pick up any duplicates. So if it thinks that you've already uploaded this receipt, it will highlight it yellow for you and say, I think this is a duplicate. So don't enter this one in again. The other thing is if you've already entered in the transaction and you upload the receipt later, it'll say, hey, I think I found a match for you as well. So I'll show you what that looks like as also. <laughs> and then lastly, rules. Rules are one of my favorite places in QuickBooks because it helps data entry go that much faster if you're using them. So I want to make sure you're using some of these rules effectively. So let's dive into QBO so that you can really see what's going on here. Bada boom, bada bang. Inside QBO, this should all look familiar. We're gonna head on over to that banking tab. App transactions is where we're going to start. I just kind of want you to see what those transactions from Amazon actually look like. So once you set it up initially, if you have multiple accounts tied to Amazon, so say for example, if you have a bank account and a credit card account, you can tell QuickBooks which account in Amazon is tied to which account in QBO. So it makes data entry that much faster. You can also select an account that you want to use as the primary uh, category for your transaction. So for example, if you know your clients are primarily buying um, office supplies, you can have that be the main category. Uh, it just, and then you can pick the vendor so that if you wanted to say Amazon Marketplace or you wanted to say Amazon or Amazon.com, you have that option. So in this case, you can see the order details. So this person bought, you know, some photography photography equipment. They even bought some hole repair. So see how we may want these categorized to different places. One of them you may want in equipment. The other you might want to do put to repairs and maintenance. You have that option. You can select those options from the receipt. It makes it really easy to split a transaction without having to manually add lines because it's already there for you. And then there is a link right here on this transaction that takes you directly to the transaction in Amazon. So it's one of my favorite new features. I do hope that it's one of yours too. <laughs> and then once they're all entered, you can put, you'll see them under reviewed. And just by chance, if there are transactions that your clients are purchasing that are personal in nature and you don't wanna enter them in, you can exclude them just like you can do any transaction in the bank feed. Now receipts, I did mention all about the receipts, one of my favorite new features. Once you come over here, you have the option to manage that email address. If you haven't already set it up, pick one. Pick one that's easy for your client to remember. Remember I said that. <laughs> Don't make it hard for them. And then here are the users that are already tied to this account. You can toggle them on and off and add new users right from this menu. 
And then rules, because we spend a bunch of time in rules, I want to point out a few features with the rules um, that will make your life a whole lot easier if you have, let's say, a cleanup job and you're cleaning up multiple um, multiple months or multiple years. This will make it easy if you're setting up rules. So QuickBooks is smart. It will suggest some rules for you and you can enter those rules, you know, right there in that bank feed center and it'll tell you whether it was a suggested rule or you can have some rules that are already uh, in place that you set up on your own that you may know uh, are there going to occur. So in this case, let's just say Backblaze is one of the software that this client is paying for. You can add this rule to say it's for money out. So you know they're going to be spending it. And I love this conditions tab because one of the ways I use rules effectively is to monitor subscription payments. So we can make sure that this says any um, that the description contains black days. Usually I like bank text for whatever reason, bank text seems to work a little bit better than description. And then I like to add a condition that the amount is equal to $50. So if I know that they're spending $50 a month, then guess what? I can have this automatically add, saving me some time. If this amount is over $50 or anything other than it, it will leave it in the bank tab for my review. So this, if you aren't doing this, using these rules um, along with these additional conditions to minimize the amount of time you're spending in the bank feed, you should be. You can add up to five different conditions. So it's one tip that if you don't leave here with anything today, this is the one thing you should be utilizing. Uh, bank rules saves a bunch of time, uh, helps minimize data entry, and I hope you are using them effectively. All right, let's dive back into the content because we have a little bit of time here today. I want to make sure we talk about all the hot new features. Uh, now we're going to dig into managing the money because there are some new features here that are just going to make it easier for your clients to get paid and for them to pay bills and how to manage that cash. So did you know you can now send recurring invoices with online payments enabled and your customer or client can enter in their own banking details. No longer do we have to manage <laughs> having that customer ACH or credit card information on file, locked up securely, um, putting ourselves at risk for cybersecurity purposes when our clients can do it on their end. I love this new feature because, again, it's one less thing that I have to worry about protecting. Um, when you set up that recurring payment, uh, recurring invoice, there will be a new box that says subscription payment. If that box is checked and you are using QuickBooks' online payments feature, then your client will be able to set up auto pay on their own. So before, one thing to note here, before you send out that invoice, make sure you get a statement from your client that authorizes you to accept and collect those recurring charges. This is a legal requirement, so I am required to tell you that. So make sure you have a statement somewhere that says, hey, I'm going to charge your account monthly. You approve and have your clients sign it. <laughs> now, on the client end, when they get that invoice, they will now see the language on that pay now button say auto pay the amount monthly. Um, and so it makes it really easy because then all they have to do is enter in either the debit card information, the ACH information, or the credit card information, and it's automatically saved on your end that it will charge it every month for whatever time period you have set up, whether it's the first and ending a year later, or whether it's the 15th or every two weeks, whatever it is, it'll automatically be set up on your end and bada boom, bada bing, your money will continuously flow into your bank account. And that's what we like, getting money. Now, for those one-off payments, your clients will now have the option to schedule 
the one-time payment. So if you send the invoice on a Tuesday, but the client doesn't get paid until Friday, you can now tell them that they can schedule that payment for Friday. And so they don't forget. So that way, again, you're still getting paid you don't have to worry about whether or not the client is going to forget. Um, this only works, however, if the client is going to pay in full, you cannot split the payment up. So I need to make sure you're aware of that. Uh, but when they go to pay, they will now see this new option that says schedule the payment. It's, it's pretty neat. Um, they will need an Intuit account in order to do this. So whether that's QBO, Mint, TurboTax, whatever the option is, they will have to have that account in order to see this option. So keep that in mind as well. Now, we got the money in. Now it's time to pay the money out. Uh, if you haven't already seen the bill pay that's powered directly by Melio, built into QuickBooks Online Essentials Plus in advance, baby, you need to go back and look at it because this is a time saver if I ever saw one. So we used the receipt function to get the bills into QuickBooks. Now, when you log in, you will see this black button that says schedule and pay. Makes it really easy because we can do it directly from the platform. We are in every single day. Now, you the uh, this is free. You will have the option to pay your vendor either by debit card, credit card, or a bank account. If you do use the credit card option, there is a 2.9% fee um, to you. The beautiful thing about this is that you can pay using the option, the method that you want, and your vendor can get paid using the method that they prefer, whether that is by check or a direct deposit they can choose once they get the notification that you're sending this bill pay through Milio. Um, it is really easy to set up. It's really fast. The first time you go in here, all you have to do is connect it to your bank account, just like you would connect the bank feed to QBO. Um, and like I said, it is a free payment option unless you use the credit card feature. Uh, the only other fee that's tied to this is if you want to expedite the payment. So say if you want the payment to get to your vendor and two days versus, you know, the typical seven days, you can also pay for that upgraded feature. Um, and if you are using QuickBooks Online Advanced, there are some bill approval workflows in that um, version of QuickBooks. Now, the Cash Flow Center, it gives you one place to plan, save, and get paid. So I love this new feature. If you haven't used it, it gives you an option to be able to help you and your clients forecast your finances. Uh, it does sync all of your accounts, including credit cards and loans. Uh, under that Cash Flow Center, it gives you that beautiful snapshot of what's going on now and what's projected to happen in the future, and it'll help you lean into those advisory conversations, and I'm going to show you how. Um, so if you haven't seen it, it's in that black bar on that left navigation menu, but it's a cool, handy, uh, interactive tool that, again, is going to help you forecast that cash flow. It's going to give you uh, ways to either yourself or your client base, tell them how future changes are going to impact the cash that's that's flowing through the business. Um, it'll help you plan whether or not you need to get loans or whether you need to um, transfer money from other accounts or whether or not you need to spend some money so that you can, you know, up, update and upgrade. <laughs> so I'm going to dive back into QuickBooks and show off all of these wonderful features here about, you know, the managing the money. Um, I am going to start by showing you the bill pay powered by Milio. Um, I can't show you the getting paid features in this account because it's not tied to an online banking, um, online payments account. So in order to have access to those features with getting paid, you need to be using QuickBooks payments. So if you're not, sign up for it. It's really, it's really awesome. All right, pay bills. We already have some bills that are set up to be um, paid here. I'm just going to click on one of them. You'll notice now it says you can pay any vendor with the bank transaction. This is our wonderful pay now button. So you can schedule that online payment. It is beautiful. And if you don't see it there, you'll see it in the green button, bottom right-hand corner, schedule and save 
right then and there. So we're in QuickBooks every day, all day. So this is an opportunity to start paying bills faster, quicker, right here inside the platform. Now, Cash Flow Planner. We talked about, I talked about how you have the option here to connect this to your bank accounts and pulls in all that information. Well, in the overview here, you'll see that it has all the accounts. If you had loan payments, you could connect those as well. Um, it gives you the option about what you expect in, money that's expected out. You can kind of see at a glance you know, what's going on. And then if we tab on over to the planner here, it gives you this beautiful visual um, outline of really what's going on. Uh, we can see how our cash has been impacted, how it's grown. You can see here that the cash has grown over time, right? It went from 90,000 all the way up to 112,000, right? And we can see over time how it's projected to go up or go down, as you see. And, and we can help our clients really lean into be able to like manage this effectively and a whole lot better because, you know, one of the ways that we want to grow our businesses and their businesses is with those advisory conversations where we're taking an insight, insightful look into what we think is going to happen and we want to proactively plan for it. So one other thing about this interactive graph is that we can also track the money out using the bar graphs. So, you know, some people don't really see how much they are spending unless we show them visually. Like this is really easy to see. We can see the money in is the green and the money out is the blue. So we wanna make sure this green line is always higher than the blue line. And we might get to some months where it's not looking that way and we can help them plan and tweak for those months. So see like January is one of those months where they're spending a bunch of money. Well, maybe we need to plan a little better for that spending. Um, so it's just an, another way that we can help our clients to manage their cash more effectively and become their trusted partner in this business that they're building. So um, with these transactions, QuickBooks likes to use the historical data to help us predict what's going to go on in the future. And I love this because, again, it's helping us plan for those occurrences is helping us manage that money more effectively. Because if your clients aren't in business, then you won't get paid. So it's a win-win when we help them have the cash in the bank to be able to pay not only us, but also their employees and their vendors and then getting paid from their clients. So it just makes it better overall for um, the economy and, you know, the self-esteem of the client, because we want them to feel like, yes, they're winning. We don't want them, you know, crying because they were like, oh, we ran out of money when this is something we probably could have predicted. Uh, so <laughs> we have the option to look at all the transactions and QuickBooks will tell us, hey, we have some transactions that are probably overdue. You might want to pay those um, money in. We can look at what's expected to come in. If you know that you have a big contract coming up that you're going to get paid from, you can add that in here. So say if we know December 31st, we're going to get paid from, oh, this is too long. Doesn't like all of this name. <laughs> and we know we're going to get paid $10,000. $10, well, we can add this in here and that will adjust how our cash is um, impacted in the month of December. We can also do the same thing with money out. If we think we're gonna have a big piece of equipment we need to buy, we're gonna have to buy you know, a car um, in December and we're gonna spend $7,000. We can save that in here and see how it's going to impact the cash overall. And it's, it's awesome because it's a projection and, and it's one of those things that we can now quantify to the client by showing them this beautiful report. There's this option here to export the report as a PDF. Once you do so, 
you can now visually see and go over this with your client. It'll show them, you know, where the cash has been, come in, how much has gone out, what that ending balance is, and where we think it's going to go over time. So, you know, we have the options to project. And this just lends for some conversations with our clients where we can really have some insights into their business and then help them plan for them a little bit better. So if they know that, you know, Christmas is the mad rush and they're expecting for their revenues to be 25% higher, we can see how that's going to impact overall. Maybe their cost of goods sold is also going to increase and we can figure out ways to help them reduce those costs by maybe buying in bulk and planning for that busy rush. Um, so you should be um, using this cash flow planner to, you know, again, start having those conversations with your clients to see specifically how you can help them keep more of the money that they've worked so hard for. All right, let's dive back into QuickBooks. And we're going to finish up here by talking about month and close because we all have to do it, right? It's super important that we <laughs> finish up the month talking about reconciliations, a month in review, and then some tips on better reporting. So if you haven't seen this already, there is a auto bank statement import um, that is coming in. QuickBooks has partnered with over 1,500 banks to be able to import those statements automatically so we don't have to chase down bank statements or our clients getting us read-only access to get those statements because guess what? They will live right inside of QuickBooks. You will see when you go to the reconciliation screen, if that bank is participating, they, there will be a button that says view statement. It will open up on the right-hand side of that window and show you the statement that haven't been reconciled yet. Um, and then there's a tab that says reconcile. So what it does is it automatically adds it to the reconciliation once it's completed. Um, and for those banks that aren't participating, you do have the option to manually attach that statement directly inside of QBO. Once you finish the reconciliation process, there will be a box that says attach statement. You just click it and upload that statement just like you would uh, any file by just searching for it on your computer using that Windows Explorer. Um, the way that you can see which statements have automatically been added or have manually been added is if you go to um, the accounting reconcile tab and then history by account, you will now notice this column that says statements. The uh, statements that have the paperclip looking uh, blue link beside it are the uh, reconciliation statements that do have that bank statement that are attached. If you need to add the statement, you will see where it says attach. And you have the option again to click that link, find the file on your computer and just save it right then and there. Makes it really convenient in case your client ever needs to look for the bank statement or um, whether you are a tax pro or something and you're only looking at the bank of reconciliation and you might need to look at a transaction later. It's right there inside of QBO. Again, you don't have to get that read-only access. Makes it really, really simple, easy, breezy, lemon peasy. <laughs> month in review. If you have not already looked at the month in review, this process is broken up into a couple of different stages, uh, phases, and it makes it really easy to get through month in process and train new staff. So I love using this with my newer uh, staff because they have a formal process they, that they can follow. And I'm going to show this off when we dive back into QBO. And then um, I mentioned that it's broken up into phases. So that first phase is looking at the transactions. The second phase is actually reconciling those accounts. It will point out the accounts and the last time they've been reconciled. And uh, all of this can be customized. It's so beautiful. And then lastly, final review, you want to look at those bank statements. I mean, look at those financial statements, making sure everything is, is looking really good. But you may have other statements you want to look at before you get those reports over to the clients. So we're going to talk about that once I dive back into QBO. Um, and then lastly, reports. I know we all send our reports, but I want to talk a little bit about the management reports because I think they don't get enough love and attention. And so I want to show them off a little bit here before we conclude this session. But before we do that, let's dive back on in to QBO. 
and we're going to start with that view statement button. So again, once you log into QBO, you're accounting, reconcile, and you're at the account that is connected directly with QBO, you will see the view statements button. It pops that beautiful window out on the right-hand side of the screen where you have these links for all of the statements that need to be reconciled. Um, if they have been reconciled, they will show up here. I'm not going to open this because it is a live customer's account and I don't want you to see their banking information. <laughs> but it just makes it really easy to be able to reconcile quickly. What happens is once you click that link, it opens that statement in a new window and you will be able to put the QBO reconcile tab and the bank statement up side by side and kind of match and go along right side by side. Makes it easy. I love it. Uh-oh, I'm supposed to be back in QBO. <laughs> All right, month in review. It is its own tab right here inside of QuickBooks. If you have not used it before, you absolutely should. Like I mentioned before, it's a really good way to train new staff or to give yourself a formal process to follow every single month to make sure the books are closed out. So before you start, the first thing it does is tells you exactly how many transactions are in the bank feed that may need your love and attention. So you can, it, and this month in review has live links. So it takes you to all of the places is recommending that you go. So this could be the first thing that you need to do. Once you do this, you can also set a custom status, whether you're just needs to be to do is waiting or it's done. So that lets other people, if you're working with others, know where you are in the process. Um, it also highlights some open issues, things like uncategorized transactions. This will pull in transactions from uncategorized assets, income, expenses, all the things we don't want transactions uh, to be in. And so my clients know not to charge anything there or code anything there, but every once in a while it happens. So I love that this highlights this for for us. Also, transactions without payees. This will show this up right here on the screen because we should all have transactions with payees in case we need to run a vendor report. You don't want those transactions in QBO without those vendors. So make sure you're adding them. Um, it shows undeposited funds, unapplied payments, and then it has some additional items. So if there's something you need to enter on a monthly basis, let's say a depreciation journal entry, you can add this item here. So all of this can be customized for your client. So that's step one, transaction review. Then we move over to account reconciliation, where it walks you through all of the accounts that need to be reconciled. And that includes checking, savings, as well as credit card accounts. And it shows you how many, uh, when's the last time you reconciled them? If it's never been reconciled, how many uh, transactions are reconciled? So it's a, a nifty little feature and it takes you directly to the reconciliation if you click it. So I love this because it's a live link. Again, formal process you can follow to get right then and there. You can also add some additional items. So say in my case, um, I like to add a credit card receivables account. We can add that as an option to reconcile. So again, you can add the item. You can even add a link to it. So it's pretty handy and nifty, especially to train uh, your new staff or give them a formal process to follow. And then we have the final review, which just goes over some things we should be looking at, accounts payable, accounts receivable, and just reviewing the financial statements. Once again, can be customized to add any reports that you like to look at. So maybe you want to add a custom, um, a custom report to look at all the contractors for the month to see if you need to collect W-9s just an option, um, but it can be customized. Now, back over into reporting. I mentioned the management report really gets no love. Did you know that there's this beautiful reporting package called the management report that allows you to send out this beautiful report to your clients that um, is a PDF. It's just really pretty. It has a date on it. You can add a logo if you want. It has a table of contents. You can add some notes. But this beautiful report I find that a lot of people don't really use. Uh, one thing you can do to it is you can actually customize it. So if you hit the arrow down and hit 
edit, you do have the option to add additional reports. So say if there is a custom report you have set up, um, you want to see the contractors every month. It, you can automatically add this report. It will then adjust the table of contents. You can say you want this you know, select the period. Even with these reports, you can say if you want to um, compare them or not, if you have the option. But I'm just going to save this really quickly uh, so that you can see what it looks like. So we've saved it. And now we're going to run it. And you'll notice now that I added that custom report. It has now added it to our table of contents. So it's the last page. And bada boom, bada bing, when we scroll through, it is a beautiful uh, report that's now showing up in this PDF package. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.